everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. I appreciate that. It's my first time at Open Mic, so. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm from West Virginia. I don't know if any of you know where that shit all the state is, but uh, it really sucks. But you know, I just moved here from there. I live in Greenpoint now. Um, obviously, I'm not Polish and I'm not a girl, so I don't really know what I'm doing there. But um, anyway. <laughs> So, um, the funny thing about West Virginia is, you know, like, everyone thinks you're just poor and stupid, but here everyone's, like, defined by their neighborhood. Like, you've got the, uh, you've got the hipsters in Bushwick and in Williamsburg, and then you've got, like, the Upper East Side people, really aristocratic, and you've got, like, Harlem, uh, don't get me started on Harlem, those people. The gays, am I right? With Neil Patrick Harris there now, like, leading the way for gay gentrification. You know, next thing you know, like, February is gonna be, uh, Gay History Month, so look for that next month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's the West Virginia me. I, I love gay people. I, I love the gays. They're great people. They're very clean, which New York City really needs. Um, so that's good. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, it's funny coming from an ignorant state. Um, <laughs> you can't tell it all, right? I'm totally making a great impression on you guys. But, um, but coming from an ignorant state, you know, let me give you an example of like something that happened to me. Um, so my grandma died back in spring. And yeah, whatever she said. And <laughs> so my grandma died, and you have to have that funeral thing, and that's weird and awkward, and you see people you don't normally talk to. And uh, anyway, we're cleaning out like the front yard. My uncle's in the front yard, and I'm from a small town, so like everyone kind of word travels fast, you know. And all of a sudden, like uh, my neighbor, he lives two like houses away. We've seen it. We see him all the time. But he, he comes down. You know, he heard about you know my grandma dying. He comes down. He's like. He goes up to my uncle, he goes, hey man, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry to hear your brother's mom died. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he's not good at, uh, biology or anything, really, so, so he didn't, uh, he didn't get it, so, um, my uncle's just like, fuck yeah, um, yeah, thanks man, appreciate that, it's really nice to you, yeah. So, so, no, it's a really ignorant state, you know, um, and it's funny because when I was in West Virginia, I always felt smart, and then I moved to New York. New York's weird, you know, it's, it's like I'm um, moving my dick out in front of a bunch of first graders now. Like, we all have the same size dick. And, uh, <laughs> you know, except like the two black kids in the corner, they went to like Harvard or something, I don't know. <laughs> They're like way smarter than everyone else. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's weird. It's just, it's to deal with this ignorance, uh, what I would do, I would often smoke a lot of pot in high school. Um, it really helped me out a lot, and then, uh, I think, you know, my parents never really caught me. They always kind of had this idea that I smoked pot. I think they were always a little suspicious, but they never really, like, uh, ever caught me. And so, one day, like, after high school, <laughs> yeah, it's funny, not being caught smoking pot, it's good. Um, <laughs> well, one day, my mom, uh, my mom comes home, let me back up, I just got done jerking off. So, uh, so anyway, I was hungry after I jerked off, and I still had like that residual boner. You guys know what I'm talking about. And, uh, it's kind of like, like just, like a little to the side, you know. And uh, this was before Superbad came out, so we didn't have like that, you know, profound change in the game where you could just tuck your boner straight up in your waistband. Like this, this changed the game. So like, I have a boner right now. You can't even really tell, can you? Like, so, but anyway, she comes home. And uh, I'm downstairs with this sandwich and my half boner. She comes downstairs and she's like, "Oh, hey, son, it's good to see you. Um, you know, hey, what, what, uh, you got anything to tell me?" I'm like, "What the fuck? Like, does my mom think I? Does she see my boner? Does she think I just got done jerking off? Is she really gonna confront me about that? Like, is that <laughs> something I really have to worry about right now?" <laughs> well, it gets way worse. So, she uh. She always had that sort of suspicion that I'd been smoking pot, so what she does is she kind of looks down, now she's like kind of staring at my boner and it's freaking me out. <laughs> I'm really worried. And she goes, is that, do you have pot in your pants? And grabs my dick. And, <laughs> and, and, I swear, this is a true story. And yeah, it happened. West Virginia incest, right guys? Yeah. Like, yeah um, but no, that happened. It's a true story. And she thought it was like a bag of pot uh, or a bowl or so. She goes, is that a bowl? I'm like, no, mom. No, mom. It's my dick. It's my dick. She's like, oh my god. She's traumatized, you know. She walks away. We never talk about it again. But the, the one thing that really disappointed me more than anything about that whole situation was the fact that uh, she didn't think it was a bong. She just thought it was like a bowl. So, <laughs> so now I just smoke pot at my place at Greenpoint. But anyway, 
Guys, that's my set. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.